Hold on to your hats, this could be interesting. Welcome to TCBI Questions, the show where we ask the tough questions and the not so tough questions totally at random. Joining me today for the first show is Hannah. Hey, uh. The rules for this are no skips unless the question doesn't apply, or your answer will be only one sentence because that's not very interesting. Adult language is okay if you have to use it to answer your question. And the first question Hannah, what am I to you? Uh, you are my soon-to-be brother-in-law. There we go. Nice, easy one to start it off. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first question. When you go to a movie, do you like to sit in the back, middle, or front, and why? I like to sit in the middle, just because it's like, in the, at the front, I feel like I'm staring up at the screen too much, and if I'm at the back, I'm too far away. Like, being in the middle, like, right in the middle of the seats, too, I feel like I've got, like, just the entire picture. I always find that I like to sit further at the back, especially in Napier where we had smaller movie theatres, because mm. when you're at the back, it's kind of like being in the middle and then. <laughs> That's true. Because at the back, you can kind of take in the entire screen at once. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but in, in Dunedin, I guess I've mostly sat in the middle. Mm. I know. I think it was mostly also because that's where all my friends just automatically migrated. So I was just like, all right, whatever, we'll do that. At least you have friends that wanted to sit in the middle and not at the front. That is true. So I knew some people that did that. It was like, hey. I know. No, I. there were some people I knew as well that would go and sit in the front. And, like, they just, like, they wouldn't even watch the movie when they sat at the front. They'd just, like, have popcorn fights and stuff. I'm like, I want to <sighs> watch this. That's why I came. And then they just distract all the people that are sitting at the front because all you can see is people moving around and playing mm-hmm. with popcorn. Not fun. People that talk and... Have noisy food and stuff. So annoying in movies. Uh, no, actually, the last movie I went to with Becky, we were those people who were talking, which was. Uh. <laughs> to be fair, like there was like four people in the theater. Okay. So fair enough. It was. It wasn't too bad. All right. Can we move on to the next one? Yeah. You want to pick a category? Uh, we'll start off easy and just do the 100 fathoms. What important competition have you lost? I'm really bad at losing competitions. Like, I'll enter competitions on Twitter and stuff, and then I'll be really mad when I don't win. It's like, ah. <laughs> But I've never really, I don't think I've ever lost any anything really important. I don't think I have either. I mean, like, I had all the sporting competitions I did when I was younger, like yeah. all my like water polo and basketball stuff, and like you'd you'd lose those, but you're against a lot of di- other people who are really really good as well. So it was sort of expected, yeah. Especially with the basketball ones, Southland's not fantastic. <laughs> Especially when we're up against Auckland and like bigger places, they have a lot bigger pool of people to choose mm. from to be able to get better people. Exactly. But apart from that, not much. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's. We'll just keep it easy for now and do another one hundred. All right. Another movie question. Yeah. What was the first movie you saw in a theater? And can you remember that? No, I cannot. <laughs> I thought that might be the case. I've been to many a movie. All right. We'll leave that one not marked as used, so it'll pop up later on. Mm. What's the worst weather situation you've been in? I can probably answer this for you. Oh, yeah? What's that? The floods in Australia. Oh, gosh, no, I totally forgot about that. That was awful. (laughs) Am I Um, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. (laughs) Oh, man. No. um, Oh, how many years ago was that now? It was like four or five years ago. We were in Australia, and we were... Like, it was Gold Coast we were coming back from. And, um, oh, no, it just started flooding. And, like, we had we ended up having to pack up all our stuff really early, like, a day earlier than we expected. And, like, we had we were, like, literally racing the roads as it flooded. So, like, behind us all the roads were closing and stuff, and we eventually got to um, wherever we were flying out from. I can't remember. 
And um, but we we stayed in this really really crappy like small uh, motel room for the night just because of the floods, and we were just like, no, why? <laughs> oh, we're so bad. <laughs> uh, no, it was funny though. It gave, gave you a good story and a good memory from your holiday. Yeah. Well, maybe not a good memory, but a memory. A memory. <laughs> Something that I can vividly remember. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh, no. What about you? A um, couple of years ago when I was in Reefton for work and there was this massive thunder and lightning storm and because Reefton's so isolated, power went out, phones went out, cell towers went out, internet was out. Pretty much everything was out. Oh, my worst nightmare. No internet. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the landlines were still working because I was in the middle of talking to Becky at the time. Right. So I had to actually pick up the landline phone in my motel room and call Becky and go, um, so there's no power, and there's no internet, so um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> and then when I got to work the next morning, everything was out and it was okay. just a terrible, terrible day. I ended up managing to find a cell phone that had coverage because Vodafone and two degrees were out, but... Telecom kind of started working. So I managed to get a little bit of data and kind of get stuff done. And then by the time I'd messed around, everything came back. But, <laughs> but there was no internet at the motel for that night either. So I was a little bit bored. Yeah, I can imagine. Because you wouldn't have had any books or anything either. Yeah, so I just went into work because the work internet was working. That works. Yeah, mine side at like nine o'clock at night was a little bit creepy. <laughs> All right, what category would you like next? Oh, let's go. We'll go a little bit deeper, 500 fathoms. What's your favourite holiday tradition? What meaning does it have for you? All right, my one's easy. Photo of me in front of the Christmas tree. Ah. Mum's been doing it for as long as I can remember. Yeah, so you can see me, like, grow, and suddenly I'm taller than the Christmas tree. (laughs) And then they buy a new Christmas tree, and then I'm not as tall as the Christmas tree anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Becky and I, have, well, if we haven't been in Napier, we've taken photos of me in front of the tree and sent them to my parents as well. That's that's a little bit cute. <laughs> you have to show me those at some point too. All right. I may even be able to hunt one out to chuck in the show notes. Oh. What about you? Um, mine hasn't been like completely like the entire way through but going to midnight mass and like singing in the choir or something like that just because midnight mass is like it's like a family time sort of thing yeah Mm -hmm. it's just it's just good and like you can always hear the leash shouts in the choir at the top yes you can (laughs) even from the front row which is where i've always ended up you can always pick you guys out oh yeah well of course (laughs) <laughs> it's because we enjoy it Yeah, which is good Yeah Alright, let's bounce off Talking about Midnight Mass and pick a religion question, shall we? Yeah, let's do it I think I missed <laughs> mm, This is an interesting question This is an interesting question What do you think it means to be born again? What's your knee-jerk reaction to this term? It's not literal for a start. Yeah. <laughs> it's more just finding yourself, I think. Like mm. That's pretty much the crux of it, isn't it? Yeah. Just figuring out who you are, who you want to be. Why like not why you want to be that person, but just whether or not it makes you happy. Like as I feel like as long as you're happy in your life, you're fine. Like you don't have to be, like, super successful or whatever, as long as you're happy with where you are and where you're going. Yeah. Everything will be fine. Because success isn't always a measure of happiness for everyone. Exactly. Like money or things mm-hmm. or even for some people, maybe family doesn't make them happy. Ah. Oh. See, like, I guess it just it's just weird, like, hearing that from, like, for someone who's 
like family is really important to them. Like yeah. I, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have my family. I know I'm exactly the same. It was just an just an example. Yeah, Ma- made you think they didn't. It, it did. It, yeah. it caught me for a sec there. That, well, that's the point of this is to make you think and have some good discussions. Mm. It's very yeah. true. Ah, oh, man, I'm gonna th- be thinking about this for like the next hour. <laughs> like. Oh, no. <laughs> you wait until I start doing the Thought Experiment podcast. Oh, no. Here we go. This will be fun. Lots of thinky things coming out of this podcast yeah. um, series, apparently. Apparently. Let's keep it up. You'll send a fake one? We'll go, we'll go for a really deep one. A thousand fathoms. If you did something wrong, would it make any difference that you did so unintentionally? Would you still be morally responsible? Explain. <laughs> it's very demanding, isn't it? It is Explain. Very, explain. <laughs> Do it. Um, I think intent does make a difference. Like it's If you did something wrong unintentionally, you still did it wrong and you're still responsible for it, but the intent changes the meaning of it. Like if you didn't mean to do it, then you're still responsible for it. But I wouldn't wouldn't be, I guess, blaming someone so much if they haven't done it on purpose. I feel like also building off what you've said, if they haven't done it intentionally, then them apologising for it means a bit more. Like. Yeah, because you're pretty confident that if someone apologizes for something they did on purpose, that they're not sincere. Yeah, exactly. So if they've, yeah. Mm. Somehow we managed to talk more about the starter question than we did about, I know. We did about anything else. I know. It's just because like they make you these questions. They do make you think, and you feel like you need to have like a really good long answer for them before you even start talking. Yeah, but this just gives you no choice, and you have to kind of come out with whatever's in your brain, like straight like, out, straight away, and but try that, and get it out. But that's before. interesting too. Yeah, and it leads to a, a conversation to develop it rather than you know spending an hour thinking about it. That's true. That is very true. I keep fading out because I'm kind of leaning around the microphone trying to talk to you and not. This is so weird having <laughs> someone else in here with me, <laughs> always by myself. Ah. Uh, no, it means you're socializing. Yeah. Well, I suppose. I am anyway, but then it's like screens instead of. People. People, yeah. It's. Um... I'm not sure how my other podcast co-host would appreciate you not cook, saying they're not people. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Don't do that to me, man. Oh, no. It's not what I meant. I know. Oh, you right. know I hate that, too. You know I hate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let's drop down to an easy one, then, and yeah. see where we get with that. <laughs> If you're a doctor, which field of medicine would you specialise in and why? Probably be a GP or... I don't know. I just... I I definitely wouldn't be, like, a surgeon or anything because... That sounds far too difficult. Yes. And also, I don't think I could manage... Like, dude, I smell vomit and then I got to vomit because it's just disgusting. (laughs) I can't can't do that, man. I can't do it. (laughs) I was like, I I didn't mind doing like I wouldn't mind doing like first aid stuff. So like maybe being like a first responder in an ambulance or something that would be all right. So you can deal with blood but not vomit. Yeah, don't I don't I don't know, man. <laughs> I just I mean I deal with it like I deal with enough bloody noses and stuff at the pool and yeah. like cuts and stuff, so it's not a big deal. But there's something about vomit I just can't do. <laughs> and now you've made any of the listeners who don't like vomit feel a little bit ill. <laughs> Great. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Anytime. Um, it's annoying that the doctor's in the question, because I'd probably be a psychologist or something if it was Are they yeah, they're still, still a doctor? They've still got a PhD. Yeah. Still technically a doctor. Yeah. Psycholo- well, psychology in general isn't interesting, because then you have to do all the, like, 
health stuff and all the research and all that kind of stuff. But like human behavior is really interesting. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't in IT, that would probably be one of the next things on my list. But only if I could like avoid all the research and crap, which you can't really avoid. No, you really can't. You really can't. I know, which is a shame. No, it's just uh, like, because I'm in first year uni at the moment. So, like, I've got a lot of people in my hall doing psychology and I'm looking at all their, like, lab reports and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, no, why? It's why? not what you think of when you say psychology when you're no. in high school. No, you think of, like, people lying on a, <laughs> on a, couch. On a couch, like, telling you what's wrong in their life and you being like, <laughs> yeah, okay. So How does that make you feel? <laughs> Maybe not exactly that. That's a bit. That's. I mean, that is a stereotypical thing. It but is that. that at exactly. the same time, you're like, maybe, maybe this, in, instead, like, just like giving them options rather than like telling them what telling to do. them what to do, like not completely controlling them, but just letting them know that there is support there. Yeah, the thing called active listening, which is pretty much just hearing what people say and then bouncing it back at them, and they end up making the decisions themselves without realizing that they've done all the thinking. That way, you're not really influencing them at all. They're just you're just you know being a sounding board, and then they go, "Ah, oh, thanks." Like I did not much. <laughs> I didn't really do anything. I just but, repeated what you said back yeah. to you and made you think about it a bit more. It actually works, though. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I use it on you a lot. You do. And it works. It does work. And you still come back, so. I do. <laughs> Don't know why. Oh, no. Oh, no. You should see the look that head is giving me right now. You're a dick, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing about audio podcasts is that it's just the audio and nothing else. Yeah, I know. Does that mean I can insult you? Like, verbally? Anytime you be a dick? No. Oh. Oh, oh. No. he's got the sad, sad face on now. <laughs> oh. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> M- move on. <laughs> move on. Your turn. Oh, gosh. Um. I actually decided to rotate. Backwards and forwards, but it means that you're not always answering the question first. Yeah, that's true. I it's, figured that was a better way to do it. Yeah, it's, it's flowing better, so. Oh, if you had to change your first name, what would you choose? <laughs> wow. That's a tough one. I don't know. I know what I would choose. Yeah. Don't know why, but I've always liked the name Annalise. Huh. Yeah, just just sounds nice. And you can shorten it to Anna if you want, but Annalise is just a nice name. Hmm. Yeah, I'd never really thought about it, and nothing really comes to mind. I don't think I, I like the thing is like I can't imagine you as anyone other than Dan. <laughs> it's just Dan. Yeah, not even Daniel, which is what I was known as to like year eleven. I don't know. I, I I call you Daniel occasionally. Yeah, you do when you want to get a rise out of me. <laughs> it's fun. Not even my parents call me Daniel. There are lots of people at work do because that's what's in my signature. Uh. Yeah, so even if I sign an email, Dan, the next email will still be, Hi, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you haven't read my email completely. <laughs> you've, just, you've just skimmed through the important bits and then been like, eh. Yeah. It's all right. I did ask for Dan when I applied, but because sent them my driver's license and stuff, and they all had Daniel on it, that's what I got. Ah. Uh, <coughs> it's, it's a good thing about Hannah. You can't you can't really do anything to it. No. It's just Hannah. Or you, get the, you do get the people who are like, Anna? No, Hannah with yeah. an H or a H, <laughs> whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, that letter. Yes. I don't know many people that say H. A lot of teachers at high school said H. That's like, annoying. It's especially my biology teacher, level one. It would always be H. Hmm. I think it's just 
easier to differentiate. I don't know what you differentiate yeah, with, though. Say, like, it, versus is it, what? <laughs> I don't know. It's like uh, the whole Z versus Z yeah. thing. Because I got an American to record the intro for this podcast. It's mm-hmm. tcbi.nz, and I cringe every time. <laughs> oh, no, NZ. Yeah. Got to gotta do – I used to say Z. Really? Yeah. Like I, when I learned my ABCs, it would be X, Y, Z. Just because, like, you yeah. know how the, it flows? Yeah. It fl- flows a lot better. Yeah. But huh. now it's it's cringy when anyone does Z. And you got it beaten out of you. Yeah. I think it was like, I actually, I, I continued saying Z up until about high school, like year nine ish, huh. I think. Yeah. I don't know why. Just... <laughs> and then you changed. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, no, I don't really have an answer for this one. Oh, well, there you go. My bad. It's fine. <laughs> we had a good discussion anyway. We did, which is kind of more the point. Exactly. Um, let's get jump back up to a really hard one, shall we? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Let's see if we can actually think of something. What's one thing you know for sure? Uh, that my parents love me. Wow. Yeah, boom, straight out of the... <laughs> straight out. I was going to be funny, but now I have to think of something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was going to say that we're sitting here in this room, but that could be an interesting philosophical discussion. That could be an interesting philosophical discussion. Are we real? Yeah. Oh, is this all a concept? Like, oh, like I mean, you could always go back to the, I think, therefore I am. The whole. Yes. Oh, I can't. I can't remember who said that. I think it was Francis Bacon. Let me have a look. Yeah, Dan will check. I think therefore I am. Yeah. Um, I learned it in religious studies, believe it or not. I don't know how to say his surname. Renee. Oh, um. Yeah. Oh, man. It's it's there. It's like Descartes. Yeah. Oh, Descartes or something. Yeah. There's a French, I believe. Yeah, he is a French philosopher. It's a really good joke with him. Yeah. Um, he walks into a bar and the barman asks if he wants a drink, and he says, "I think not," and disappears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love bad jokes, especially like those kind of slightly intellectual jokes. Yeah, they're good. They're good. <laughs> There you go, there's a bad joke for the night. A plus. A plus. <laughs> I can't believe you have that sound. <laughs> I have this sound too. Why? Uh, because some people on the other podcast tend to get a bit off topic. Oh, So okay. that's my way of bringing them back on topic. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's good. You know, I did that whole squirrel thing, like, years before I actually watched Up. Really? I didn't watch Up until, like, a couple of years ago. Huh. Yeah. And I knew the I knew the joke, but I hadn't actually seen the movie. And then I watched the movie and went, oh, that's where it's from. <laughs> oh, no, I do that all the time. Like, I'll get things from somewhere, and they'll be like, where is that from? And then, like, someone will show me a thing, and I'm like... Uh, uh yeah. That's that's a thing. Yes. That's where that's from. <laughs> My bad. Like I'm sure I've got like things from like Star Trek and Star Wars and yeah. all the all the other nerdy crap that I watch that's sort of just sitting in the back of my brain. And I'll be like, what is that? It's yeah. like when you see actors, like, yeah. and you're like, oh my God, I know where they're from. What are they from? What are they on? Yeah. And, and then, then you search them and, and yeah, you're like, like uh, there you go, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's some interesting ones like that. Mm-hmm. Especially people that you don't expect. Like we we, we talked about the other night, um, Michael Dawn Wolf from Star Trek playing I Am Weasel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We were just like, what? Like some of the old like cartoon characters you do not expect like to be other people. You're yeah. just like, no, that doesn't make sense. How can you do this and this? Yes. 
It's like Xing. Ooh. Ooh. Oh man, I wish we had like a camera to see all my beautiful. I kind of think you fingers adding like a camera like up on the wall so you just get like a view over top. Yeah. That wouldn't be too bad. It wouldn't really be a podcast, would it? It'd more be. It'd be uh, a podcast that we kind of because I'd release raw video rather than editing the video, so it'd just be a like kind of behind the scenes thing. Oh yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Another hole in the wall. Because <laughs> you don't have enough of those already. I should really put up a photo of the, my podcast studio because it's kind of elaborate for being in my house. Yeah, but it's well done. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a tip as of this morning. <laughs> so you told me. Yeah, it's nice and tidy. Mm. All right. So, should we? Did you answer the question? Like, apart from the was that, it, was that, that was my answer? It was your answer. I just felt a little silly because you had a really <laughs> deep and meaningful one. <laughs> It was like the thing. Like as soon as I saw that, I was just like, "Easy enough answer." Yeah. Because you know, there's no way my parents wouldn't love me. So. <laughs> it's and then, just a, and then Hannah made a really terrible face. I I have some beautiful facial expressions. I'm I'm adorable, <laughs> or as Dan said this morning, adorable. <laughs> Which uh, pun? Bad pun. Funny, but bad. Awful pun. I love it. Puns are the best, yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right. Oh, man. All right. We'll do do another deep one, shall we? All right. What's the most significant loss you've experienced? Hmm. How do you define significant? I don't know. I, yeah, I feel like absolutely. it's just what what was special or important to you. This is a really, really deep one. Because, oh, hmm. like, when when I first read it, I was like, my my thoughts automatically jumped to like losing Alpa a couple yeah. of years ago. Just. Oh, it would, would have been three years ago now. Wow. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And it was right before my birthday mm-hmm. and right before my school ball. And it was sort of just everything happening at once. And it just it just sort of flipped everything. I had to sort of think about things a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't a good... Where's my audio going? I don't know. Yeah, uh, there we go. That wasn't a good half a year, was it? No, it was it was a shitstorm, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Just putting that out there. I think mine uh, would be my mum's mum, because we spent lot, so much time with her. Because mm-hmm. I was uh, an intermediate. Yeah, so it would have been like 12 or something. Mm. Yeah, and we just spent... Yeah, so much time with her, and then because she was only sixty four. Oh wow! Yeah. No. I mean, Alpa was uh, just the side of eighty. Yeah. I think. So it was, or it might have been like eighty one. I can't remember. I can't remember now. No, no, oh no! I... Oh. No, but like, yeah. I mean. He was sort of running himself into the ground a bit. And the thing is, like, we would go see them every Sunday. It was yeah. it was a tradition. Sunday afternoons, afternoon tea with Alma and Alpa. Yeah. And it's just it's just sort of weird that we didn't we didn't I mean we still had Alma over, but we didn't go to their place anymore. Yeah. Like we don't have the like like traditions of going there, and then when we left, getting three lollies out of the lolly jar, <laughs> the lolly tin. It was just sort of a. It's, it was one of the better, like one of the really. One of the things that sort of stuck out is childhood memories. It's just, it's a big part of my childhood. Yeah. 
going on with novice. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Don't yeah. know where to go from there. You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. All right. I'm just thinking about it a bit more now. Sorry. No, it's all right. I mean, we kind of expected to get a bit deep in these, didn't we? Yeah. Um. All right, we'll drop it back one level, shall we? <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe two. <laughs> Let's go back to 100. All right. There we go. How good are you at multitasking? And give an example. Oh, God, it depends what I'm doing. I mean, generally, I like... I'm one of those people who has to have people like have things in the background while I'm doing work. So yeah. I watch like YouTube videos while I'm doing my essays or I listen to music while I'm doing my essays. It's just, I, I like having background noise. Um, other things like, I mean, like I was cooking and watching, what was I watching? Uh, Justice League versus Teen Titans the other day. <laughs> Chris, oh, Christine gave me a list of things to watch. Right. And I was just like, all right, I might as well get started on them while I'm on break. Yeah. So, yeah, we did that. Did that. Um, Not so much good at other things. It just depends what it is. I mean, like, I can't skateboard while juggling, juggling or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> not, I'm not that good, but I can do a couple of things at the same time. I just got to yes. watch Hannah mime juggling while she was trying to remember what the word was. <laughs> yeah. I I pretty much multitask all the time. I can't my brain's never just thinking about one thing. Mm. And my brain jumps between topics really easily. Like I'll I'll just be sitting there and then I'll say something to Becky and she'll go, Where did that come from? And then I'll tell her like the twenty steps of where I started <laughs> and where it got me to it. She just looks at me and going, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much always multitasking. I always have podcasts on in the car. I, if I don't watch TV while I'm cooking tea, I get bored. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always something on in the background, even when we sleep. <laughs> yeah. No, I I understand that because I've had to share a room with Becky a few times. Yes. Yeah, that's easy enough. I sleep like the dead. So yes, it's you fine. do. <laughs> <laughs> oh no Yeah And my job I kind of have to multitask mm. So I'm You know Working on a job And replying to emails And answering questions From someone And it's Yeah If you couldn't multitask You'd just sink mm. Well there goes The stereotype There Girls are better At multitasking Than guys <laughs> And so I was good at it I said that I had to do it <laughs> Touche Yeah yeah. Next question, eh? Yeah. Mm. Let's go middle ground. Have you found your place in this world? If so, where is it? Sounds like they got this out of Promo Targo, doesn't I it? I know. I was just thinking that. It's like the Targo. Find your place in the world. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> oh, no. I'm still finding my place. I I don't know where the hell I'm going <laughs> at well, this point. I'm 19. I don't yeah, need exactly. to know. A lot of these questions are probably thinking of people a bit older. Yeah, just just maybe a little bit. Maybe a little. I mean, yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing next year. Which is fine. Yeah, it's good. I'll just finish my year and see where we go. Yeah, there's no point doing anything else. Exactly. Yeah, I think I'm I'm pretty sorted now. My, my career and Becky and all the podcasting and everything like that. Mm. Got sort of a nice wee bubble. Yeah. You sort of know where the boundaries are, I guess. And it's not even like five, maybe six years ago. This is not where I thought I would be. <laughs> yeah. What? Did, where did you just branching branching here? Um, where did you think you would be? Like. Well, five and a half years ago, my girlfriend at the time was planning on going to China to teach English. Ah. So I was kind of tagging along with that. Right. And then I met your sister. <laughs> you were like, yeah, I'm not going to China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. 
See, learning things. Yeah. Learning things. It's good. Yeah, for the amount of time we spend together, we don't actually know a huge amount about each other. No. We, f- we find the like, really small little things that we have in common, and we're like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And now we're doing this, and we're figuring stuff out. Yeah. So. Everyone else is coming along with us. <laughs> yeah. I hope this isn't boring for the <laughs> I don't actually know. I don't think it's boring, but we'll see what the reception's we're, like. We're part of the conversation, so yes. it's sort of a bit different. <laughs> but I enjoy listening to these kind of podcasts. That's true. I'm, I mean, there are audiences everywhere. Yeah. So, so the, I got the idea for this podcast from a podcast called Family from the Heart, which is uh, Cliff Ravenscraft and his wife, and Cliff's the one that I took to Queenstown. Right. Yeah. So they they had this where they, like, Cliff would send Stephanie a whole bunch of questions and then they'd discuss it. So that's kind of where the idea came from. Right. And hopefully I I would really love to get Cliff on here and have this just kind of discussion with him. So we'll see how we go. Yeah. It's good that you've got a sort of path that you want to take with this too. Yeah. It's going to, yeah, we'll probably get about 100 episodes out of my questions database before they start repeating, which is pretty good. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be a nice wee series. Yeah, and then I have to have to find some new questions or start again. Yeah, because and that's like two years worth of episodes. Yes, but uh, I've got quite a queue of people. Yeah, waiting. So I may end up being able to do more than one a week, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just be able to do a whole lot and then do nothing for like half a year. <laughs> I haven't quite yeah. decided about that yet. Just see how we go. Yeah. All should right. We, should we try another one? <laughs> Let's see. Um, we'll do another starter question, shall we? Just because yeah. most of them have been pretty deep down this end. Yeah, sure. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word fun? At the moment, it's Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I am having so much fun with that. Oh, my my party is a lot of fun. We've offic- we've off- did I tell you, we've officially named our party Collateral Damage. <laughs> That's awesome. Because every time we try to do a quest, someone like either gets killed or like injured seriously, and we have to leave someone behind. We've split the party so many times, that it's like one thing you do not do, you do not split the party. But oh, it, no. it just happens, and people... Oh, we've had we've had some good times and some really bad times, uh, <laughs> but it's been fun. So I'm gonna have to get into that at some point. It's oh, just a matter dude. of finding time. Yeah, and f- like finding a like dungeon master and a game that you can join. Yeah, and then kind of having to be kind of semi committed to doing it all the time. Yeah, I mean the the OUSA at Otago does it every Wednesday night, every second. Uh, Every second Wednesday. Right. And it goes from like seven till ten. Wow. So it's it's, it's a, a three hour block. Yeah, it's a good three hours. And you kinda need that time to do anything, like yeah. in a in a campaign. But yeah. Mm. I mean my group we do it every Wednesday. Cause we do <laughs> we're just like we can't we can't wait another week. We have to do it. So we split our time between the OUSA building and Megazone. Right. So, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Sweet. What about you, Dan? What's fun? At the moment, it's actually the podcasting. Hey! I, if you've seen me, like, in high school English class with speeches, like, like cue cards, like, shaking, oh. and my voice shaking, and it's just crazy. And even, like, the first couple of podcasts were kind of like that. And now I've just gotten used to talking and knowing that there's hundreds of people listening to what I'm saying. See, I hadn't even thought about that. This was just <laughs> you and me having a conversation with a microphone in front of me. Like, I didn't, people are going to be listening to this. It's going to be weird. Well, like it says in the, the gear steps, don't say anything you wouldn't want the world to hear. Imagine your parents are listening. And then I've got in brackets, Dan's definitely are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mum. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> that, I know they'll be listening. Uh, my parents are my biggest fans. That's a little bit cute. <laughs> no. Yeah, so that's what it is for me at the moment, is actually this kind of public speaking stuff, which is so weird. Because <laughs> I used to hate speeches, like, with a passion. 
Let's see. I, I, I didn't like speeches, but I was good at them. Yes. Which was kind of like, because I did debating for like four years. And then I, I did speeches and I was special character and stuff. So you sort of had to do the whole talking in front of like mass amounts of people. Like Vernon yeah. was like 700 kids that I just speak in front yeah. like every Wednesday. <laughs> and it's like, and the thing is like, you don't get over your, ner- like you're still really nervous when you do it, but yeah. it get, just gets easier and easier and easier every time you do it. Yeah. Actually, what's worse than speaking is singing in front of people. Like solo yeah. singing. Like qu- I can like, imagine. Put me in a choir. I am fine. I am good. I can do it. Yeah. When it's just me, I freak out. <laughs> Fair enough, too. It's fine, though. We get through it. Yes. We don't muck up most <laughs> of the time. And, yeah, performers have a knack of not actually outwardly showing how nervous they are. Mm-hmm. Just keep it, keep it in. And then you freak out afterwards when no one can see you, and it's fine. <laughs> I was going to say something, but it's just gone. So it's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. All right. This is going to be the last question. Oh, what are we ending it on? Do we want to end it on a deep note or a shallow note? I don't know. It's rock paper scissors for it. I'll be <laughs> I'll be shallow. You be deep. All right. All right, shallow it is. All right. What is one of the biggest purchases you made? And if you had to negotiate for it, how did you negotiate for it? It was it was my iPhone. It was and a you, set price. Yeah, you can't really negotiate for that. Nope, which is sad. <laughs> There's no margin in Apple products. Nope. No, even for the retailers. Unless unless you're like a student and you get that sick ten percent discount. Yeah, which is about all of Apple well, it was about all of the margin that the retailers would ever have. Yep. Which is pretty crazy. Apple's expensive. Yes, but the technology just works. Yeah. So There you go. And we are sitting in my biggest purchase. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, well, not only the junk, but also the house. Yeah. True. <laughs> and how did I negotiate for that? I lowballed like crazy. Yeah? The um, asking price was 199000 and I offered 175 And, of course, they said, uh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then they came back and that next offer was good, so. Sick. Yeah, but I just lowballed to see what, what where they were at with it. Mm-hmm. And at least they didn't tell us to get lost. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is very true. Because that was always a possibility, but... Mm. Yeah. But you you guys have made this place your own. Like, oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. You you know whose house this is when you walk in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a bit hard to escape it when you walk past my office and see all this here. You're just like, there's Dan stuff. Yeah. And then... Yeah, kind of spills over into Becky's office too, though. I've got most of it out. And now that it's clean, I can get the rest of it out. Mm. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Hannah. No problem. That was the first one. Done and dusted. Yeah. If you'd like to be on the show, you can go to tcbi.nz slash guest form and sign up. Anybody is welcome to sign up, and I would love to talk with you. And until next time, to our listeners, add one friend to one episode of this podcast with two open minds and see where it leads. Thanks for listening. Now that was interesting. Bye-bye.